What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And what you're looking at right now is my current Mac Mini setup. Now I would argue that the new Mac Mini is probably the most versatile PC that Apple is selling to date. In a world where Apple wants to completely control your user interface, besides the older generation Mac Pro, the Mac Mini is the only real product where you can affordably get into the Apple space and be in control over your end user experience. And thereby we can have cool setups like this. Now the monitor that we're using is the BenQ EX 351R. This is a 35 inch HDR ultra widescreen curved display with a native resolution of 3440 by 1440, 100 hertz refresh rate with AMD FreeSync enabled, and with Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, the setup is super simple and straightforward. And since we're going to be doing some 4K video editing as well as a little bit of gaming on the Mac Mini, I want to hook up an external GPU. We're going to be specifically using the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. This has a Vega 56 graphics card from AMD built inside. As you can see, super clean design matches perfectly with the Mac aesthetic. And at the back, since we're interfacing with USB-C, which has a data connectivity, you get an extra USB type A hub, as well as an HDMI output if your monitor doesn't have a Thunderbolt port. Now in terms of peripherals, instead of using the old boring Magic Mouse and Apple keyboard, we're gonna use something that's a lot better and certainly more interesting. For the mouse, we're using the Logitech Pro Wireless. Logitech here want to make the most perfect optimal gaming mouse imaginable and after much acclaim from the esports community i think they might have achieved uh, their goal the mouse weighs about 80 grams so it's ultra lightweight the design is super simple and straightforward it's ambidextrous so there's absolutely no fluff and it's designed for a competitive gaming environment so even the dpi switch is at the bottom of the mouse so you don't accidentally hit it and most importantly the uh, data rate which is less than one millisecond response time they're using what they call their light speed wireless technology is imperceivable uh, from a cable. In terms of performance, there's zero acceleration, filtering, or smoothing, so the performance from your hand uh, to the game is uh, completely direct and uncompromising. And continuing forward with our hardcore gaming theme, I'm also using the Corsair K70 Mark II. More importantly, this actually has the new low-profile Cherry MX switches, which doesn't really compromise too much in terms of key travel, but is 35% lower in terms of overall height compared to the standard standard switch so you still get that lightning quick tactile response that you would get from a typical speed oriented cherry mx red switch uh, but just in a lower profile which i think is ergonomically superior lastly we have a dualshock 4 controller which connects uh, to the mac mini just using bluetooth and we're going to be using this for playing some third person games as well as some racing uh, games as well now beyond the hardware itself, I just want to demonstrate the capabilities of this Mac Mini setup. Now we have the 6 core version of the Mac Mini which specifically has the i7-8700B processor. That's a 6 core with 12 threads, it can turbo up to 3.2 GHz. And on Cinebench R15, we're getting a fairly decent score, about 1187. On Geekbench, we're getting about a single core score, about 5600, and 23000 on the multi-core score. More importantly, in terms of the graphical performance using this 3440 by 1440 monitor on Valley. I just want to demonstrate the difference between using the integrated graphics and our eGPU Pro from Blackmagic, which has that Vega 56 built inside. So on uh, just the integrated graphics, uh, basically low details at the native resolution of the monitor, we're getting a measly 6.4 average frames per second. But with the eGPU on high detail settings, we're getting 46.7 average frames per second so it's pretty much a must to have an external GPU solution if you're going to use a monitor like this to do any sort of graphical based applications uh, with the Mac mini. Now I'm also going to throw up uh, some average and uh, minimum uh, FPS scores on uh, three games Rise of the Tomb Raider, Grid 2 and Fortnite Battle Royale. Now the game selection on Mac OS 10 is obviously fairly limited but you always have the option of installing Windows on the Mac mini which will expand your horizons and gaming capability especially if you're going to invest in an external gpu now for 4k video editing i want to render out a two minute uncompressed 4k uh, project on premiere pro and it took about 18 minutes just using the mac mini itself but with the eGPU help it took only 13 minutes so that's uh, certainly a big advantage there and plus if you're going to do any kind of color correction you have the ability to play back uh, those uh, video files with the eGPU 
CPU versus just the integrated graphics, you're going to really struggle. So essentially with the combination of the six core Mac mini and an eGPU, you get iMac pro level of performance at a fraction of the cost. Now there's certainly much more affordable options out there for eGPUs, monitors, peripherals, things like that. And that's the beauty of the Mac mini is the versatility factor in the fact that you can choose whichever peripherals and components you want to use to optimize your setup and to get the most out of your money. So uh, definitely check out the description down below if you want more details about everything we're using. And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for a full review of, of the uh, Mac mini coming up very soon and we'll see you real soon next time.